Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Everyone, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm with Steve, and we're talking a little bit of Final Cut Pro and Photoshop today, right? Yes, this is kind of a part B or part do or the sequel to the Photoshop uh, episode we did a while back. Okay. So uh, we're back into Photoshop because Photoshop is the Ginsu knife of image editing applications. Yes, we all it is. use it. We just use it. I mean, and it's it's very deep. It's very deep. So what we'll look at today is um, animating layered Photoshop files, not just kind of a flattened, but um, Photoshop files that have multiple, multiple layers, layers. Like, like a composite exactly. image kind of thing. And, okay. And in particular, we're going to uh, use Final Cut to animate those individual layers to create a type of effect that you see in like movies like uh, the kid stays in the picture. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see another. Gosh, so many people are doing it now where they're bringing a photo uh, into Photoshop, breaking apart the layers. Breaking the pieces apart. Right. And, okay. then you, and then you can animate the individual layers to create some perspective. Yeah. So it's not just this flat thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. taking Ken Burns to the next level. Well, so before you were uh, controlling Ben Ken Burns, and now you're expanding. Now Ken I'm Burns. expanding. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Okay. What's so, up? so here I have a simple image. Just um, this pretty girl, and she's sitting on the beach. Mm -hmm. And as you look over here in the layer section, they, what I've used, what we've done is we've broken her out as a separate layer, and uh, we have the beach as a separate layer, and she's on a separate. So you can see here, we've used the various Photoshop tools like cloning to fill in the background. To fill in the background this, behind her. This, this image came from my stock photo, by the way, yeah. which yeah, we yeah. use a lot. And in fact, so so in it, there wasn't any data behind her. So no. once once we separate her out, we needed to fill in that background. So and that's all cloned in. Now each. cloned in, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like my shoddy cloning work. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> but it'll it's, do the job. It'll do the job okay. for what we're doing because exactly. we're not going to we're not going to remove her completely at all. That's just if she moves around a little bit to cover up. Yep. Uh, so there won't be any holes back there. So I'm going to jump back into Final Cut, and I'm going to go ahead and import that same uh, file. I'm going to go to uh, the desktop and open up, let's see here, let's see here, um, go over there, it's Beach, and I'm going to click uh, Import Selected, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's cotton copying into the Final Cut Events folder, which I typically do for any Photoshop file. Okay. And if you watch our previous episode on working with RAW, you'll know why. So go back and watch yeah. that. So we go ahead and import that. And you'll notice that this uh, particular image comes in, it was called a layered. Yeah, it's got a little icon on it there to, to let you know. It, yeah. it kind of looks like a, okay, so it's just a little stack. It means it's a layered layered graphic, graphic file, right, exactly. layered graphic file. So what I'm going to do is open this up by just double clicking. And basically it just, it looks like almost like a multi-cam clip. It's like it just container. opens up in its own timeline. Okay. Exactly. Oh, so there are the layers right there. there are the layers. Let me go ahead and close. And do they have, they even have the same, they even have the same name from Photoshop. Well, and that's a really important, I mean, as you can see, they do have the same la layered name and, mm -hmm. and you bring up a good point, Mark. If you're working with a lot of layers, it's always a good habit to get into to name your layers yeah. because when you do import them into Final Cut Pro, the layers, the names will, will come across. Be there, right. And there's no confusion okay. confusion here about what each layer is, <laughs> it's but it's still difficult. a good idea. All right, so, <laughs> hmm, so wait. we want to be able to animate these. Now, this is something I discovered, and some of you are probably going to follow your chair when you see this. You can apply Ken Burns effect to, to the individual layers. Oh, wow. So instead of just a clip in a timeline, you can do it to the layers within a, within the graphics That's file. That's right. In fact, cool. make, to make it easier to work with this, I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom beach layer, press V to disable it. Okay, so now Just, we only see... Right. Now, I don't know if about you, but I mean, by default, Final Cut Pro makes it a black background, yeah. but... You know, so you, you don't know if there's really transparency yeah, there. Yeah, one ways you can find out if you go to preferences and see, go to playback. There's a player background is black. If you want to, you can make, you make a, a checkerboard. checkerboard yeah. Make a checkerboard. There and, you hey, go. Now I know there's transparency yeah. there. And that's sort of the Photoshop thing you might be used to. Right? Exactly. So here I have this, this girl. So first thing I'm going to do is, it, this clip is way too long. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to bring it, actually let's hit control, let's do it the faster. Control P, 10 period return will move the play at exactly to 10 seconds. Okay. And I'm going to use command shift B, which is a new command that was introduced in the 10.06 update, mm -hmm. which splits across all layers. All layers, okay. Oh, and that's a huge command when yep. you have a lot of layers. So now I can just go ahead and select those two layers, delete them, press shift Z, and I essentially now you've got a 10 second. 10 second. Beautiful. Exactly. Nice. So nice now shortcuts. I have this, this layer selected, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this pop-up. I'm going to go to the crop, which is already on. This is where Ken Burns is and hiding. Ken Burns is hiding there. 
and yep. there he is there. So click Ken Burns. And I'll go ahead and make some adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and move the end framing just above her hat here. And I'll, and I'll take the start framing, make sure maybe this is a little bit down, make sure it's not chopping off her hat there. And then let's, I'll just preview the animation by clicking the little preview button. And you'll notice that there's a kind of a move on her. So you can see she's yep, kind of moving. She's where, 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 it's almost like a dolly move, like we're, we're kind of pushing in. It's like, right. you know, it's, uh, it's uh, Chief Brody on the beach in Jaws. We're kind of doing, I don't know why I thought about that. <laughs> we're, we're doing a slight like dolly. We can do a dolly zoom on her. I think you, just, so, you have something about beaches and sharks. So exactly. Yeah. So, so we know we got a, got a nice move on there. And we, okay. We, okay, that, that's good. So far, so good. So let's go ahead and disable her and enable the beach. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead again, uh, enable Ken Burns. You're going to do Ken Burns on the beach too? On the beach too, yeah. So now okay. let's turn it on. And I'm just... You know, I'm not going to make an adjustment. I'm going to leave it as the default right now, just, just to see how it looks. And notice that I'm doing a slight push in. So, and you would expect that if you were. If I guess you were, if you're moving in, both the background and her are going to get closer. That's right. The although she, although she might look to get a little closer than the background does, maybe. Right. And you can adjust that by changing the framing of the Ken Burns. So I just right. want to show right. you look, I've got a, two Ken Burns, one on the foreground and one, one on the, the background, background layer. Okay. Okay. Now, it's pretty neat. Now, you can go one, one step further is, well, Assuming you're getting closer, maybe there's a focus puller and maybe the, the, the depth of field is getting shallower, so maybe the background goes slightly out of out focus. focus. Okay. So you can take this one step further. Let's say like about right here. Let's let's throw an effect on that. So just go in here. And so I'm just going to the effects browser. Yeah, I just have a got just happens to be a gosh and verve effect that are already ready kind of called up. So I'm just <laughs> wow. gonna drop that on there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, how's anybody else gonna how's anybody else gonna do that? But All right. you go to the blur category yeah, go, yeah, and yeah, basically grab what, out of there. What I okay. did is oh you had the search field yeah, just something typed in, in there. Gosh and blur and had it come up. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we want cheating. to make sure you guys can do the same thing. <laughs> All right, so um, although we're coming out with a plugin very shortly that's gonna be an awesome oh, camera, that's true. camera blur. That's so you true. Need to look for Actually, it. it'll, it'll probably be out by the time you watch this. Okay. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe here for Gosh and Blur, and okay. we're going to set a keyframe for a mount there. So, set a mount, and we're yeah. going to bring that amount to zero for the, you know, we don't want any Gosh and Blur okay. applied, right? And um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move the playhead toward the end here and back it off one frame, and then I'm going to bring up the Blur amount. So maybe like something like that. Okay. I don't want to go too far, too yeah, silly with subtle, it. But, so but subtle, but at least enough that you can right. really see the difference. Okay. okay, so now I have two keyframes set. Yep. Now I'm going to turn this back on, press V, and... Now sure. can you get out of this whole Ken Burns thing in the window there? Oh yeah, you know what you have to those? do? You have to click done. Done, That's yeah. the key. Done done, 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 done. Good point. So now when I play this, I get this really kind of interesting looking effect. So she's moving and the background's kind of doing a slight push and then the background starts to get slightly blur as it gets uh, towards towards the end of the move. Very nice. And you've got this Very really nice, yeah, nice yeah. little um, move. And again, that was all done with uh, applying Ken Bird's effect to, to separate layers. Of a Photoshop file. A Photoshop file. Right in Final Cut Pro 10. Yeah. Nice. So again, Very nice. we're making Ken Burns obey again. <laughs> <laughs> it feels powerful, it doesn't it? <laughs> Very cool. I love it. Awesome. Uh, great. Well, thank you. Uh, RippleTraining.com for more information about Final Cut Pro 10 and doing all this great stuff. And I guess you have a, an updated version of the advanced. Yeah, advanced uh, editing workflows is available now. It's okay. got a lot of great techniques. And it covers some of this kind of stuff in there. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So please check that out. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio. And we'll see you next time.